everybody. Roger says hey. Scarlet says hey too. She's on squirrel lookout right now. So if any of you watched my videos on the Napoleonic Wars, you know that the subject of Gibraltar came up a few times, and I was really confused about it because I thought Gibraltar was part of Spain, but then the videos kept talking about Britain, like defending Gibraltar, and I was like, why do they care about Gibraltar? And all of you in the comments were like, no, Gibraltar is not part of Spain. It's like a territory of Britain or something. To be honest, I still don't know like what's going on. <laughs> I haven't looked into it yet, but I came across this video on YouTube actually a few months ago and I saved it because I thought well one of these days I'm gonna get to this on my channel and that day has come. So basically I want to know more about Gibraltar and you know what the British have to do with it. This video is from the channel History Matters and I've done a couple of videos from their channel before. A lot of you guys seem to really enjoy them but the title of the video is Why Does Britain Own Gibraltar? Which is exactly what I need. <laughs> Here we go. The Iberian Peninsula is home to the lands of five countries. Andorra and France in the north, Portugal in the west, with Spain dominating the rest. Well, most of the rest, since country number five, which sits in this tiny area in the south, is the United Kingdom. This territory is called Gibraltar, and despite numerous wars between the United Kingdom and Spain, Britain still holds the territory. Which raises the obvious question, why? Why does Britain own Gibraltar? So the first part of this question is how did Britain get a hold of Gibraltar in the first Okay, so this is one thing I wasn't clear on. I didn't know if Gibraltar was actually attached to Spain. For some reason I thought it was an island, but it's a peninsula, I guess, if you would call that a peninsula. Kind of like Florida is here. I got the same shape here going on. Like this, this right here could be like the Gulf of Mexico, you know, and then this is Florida, and then this is like Texas right here. Then you have like Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. <laughs> it's just, all right. Uh, anyway. First place. Well, the answer to that. So I just think about Gibraltar as like Florida, right? Florida of Spain. The first part of this question is how did Britain get a hold of Gibraltar in the first place? Well, the answer to that is simple. In the year 1700, the king of Spain died. Now, normally a king dying wouldn't be a problem, but this king, Charles II, didn't have any kids, which of course meant succession crisis. Charles chose Philippe of the House of Bourbon and grandson of Louis XIV of France to succeed him. This upset mostly everyone since it placed Spain and its gargantuan empire firmly in the French sphere of influence and so of course, war. Everyone united against Spain and France and in 1704 English and Dutch soldiers landed in Gibraltar and seized it to keep the mouth of the Mediterranean open. In 1713, in return for Britain leaving the war immediately- Okay, that information hit me way too fast. Well, let's go back here. Okay. So. Looking at this right here, we have France and Spain are allied because uh, the dead king of Spain didn't have any heirs, and so he chose, uh, I forgot who it was, <laughs> from France, basically, to, uh, you know, like, take over after he died. Okay, so that's why those guys are allied. With Italy allied with them also, I don't know why that is the case, uh, we have this little blue patch right here which would be, I don't know what it would be modern day, right here, hmm. Uh, so like this would be Aus I I don't know, it's really hard. Without like the, the present day borders and stuff, I don't really know what I'm looking at here. I don't know where, where this blue little patch would be right here. And then these islands out here in the middle of the, what, do, what would you guys call this part? Because like this whole area is the Mediterranean, right? With just be just being the Mediterranean. Um, okay, so th and then we have uh, Portugal, Great Britain, um, and the rest like Eastern Eastern Europe. This little red patch right here next to France, though. Shoot, I wish I I wish my geography was better. I wish I could tell tell you like what what I'm wondering is what are these where, what what modern day countries would be in these spots basically. Is what I'm wondering here, just for reference. Okay. Uh, and this goes I don't know I guess this goes partway into Russia. This would probably be like, what would it be at this point in history, Russia maybe, and. With this, the Holy Roman Empire, I can't remember what the dates are of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I need to go back and review some of this stuff. Okay. Empire firmly in the French sphere of influence, and so of course, war. 
Everyone united against Spain and France, and in 1704, English and Dutch soldiers landed in Gibraltar and seized it to keep the mouth of the Mediterranean open. Oh, in 1713, okay. in return for Britain leaving the war immediately, Spain opted to cede Gibraltar to them forever. Gibraltar. So it was probably trade trade issues then is what uh, prompted Britain to and and the Dutch to kind of team up and do that. Uh, so it's probably economic reasons that they wanted to keep the. Uh, South of the uh, Mediterranean. Okay. 13, in return for Britain leaving the war immediately, Spain opted to cede Gibraltar to them forever. Gibraltar's oh. original population had largely fled during the war and it was stationed by British troops, and from then on acted as an important naval base whose population grew thereafter. So Britain now owned Gibraltar, but what stopped Spain from regaining it? It was a tiny stretch of land attached to the Spanish mainland, so surely it would have been simple to walk in and take it. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out, no. It wasn't long until Spain and Britain were back at war again, and despite laying siege to Gibraltar a further two times over the next 75 years, it always held out. The largest siege Whoa. came during the American... Okay. So why is that exactly? Is it because the British um, military was so good, or the Spanish military wasn't that great? <laughs> Combo of the two? That's really interesting to me, because you would think, like, Spain would way outnumber... It doesn't, it doesn't look like that big of an area, so... Really impressive if uh, Britain was able to hold out. American war for independence until Spain and Britain were back at war again, and despite laying siege to Gibraltar a further two times over the next 75 years, it always held out. The largest siege came during the American War for Independence, when Britain's attention was focused on those rascals. Spain, with the help of the French, laid siege to Gibraltar for four years, hoping to starve the people out. However, the British were able to resupply Gibraltar I mean... due to the size of their navy and Spain's issues maintaining its own. As you'll know, Britain lost the war as a whole, and so when both sides sat down to negotiate, why didn't Spain use the opportunity to regain Gibraltar? One, Britain hadn't been conquered or crushed. Wait, what war did they lose? Sorry guys, this is a lot of information, information coming at me really quickly. It's hard to keep up sometimes. What war does Spain just lose? <laughs> what is he talking about? Spain, with the help of the French, laid siege to Gibraltar for four years, hoping to starve the people this out. War? However, the British were able to resupply Gibraltar due to the size of their navy and Spain's issues maintaining its own. As you'll know, Britain lost the war as a whole, and so when both sides sat down to negotiate, oh, why didn't... Oh, Britain lost. I'm not listening very well. Britain lost the war as a whole. Is he ta he's talking about, I guess, the War of Independence over here in the U.S. I'm assuming, but they're talking about stuff over in Europe, though. That However, the British were able to resupply Gibraltar due to the size of their navy and Spain's issues maintaining its own. As you'll know, Britain lost the war as a whole, and so when both sides oh, sat yeah, down yeah. to negotiate, why didn't Spain use the opportunity to regain Gibraltar? One, Britain hadn't been conquered or crushed and could still fight, meaning Spain couldn't get everything it wanted. And okay, so what I guess what's confusing me here is I understand um, Britain, or, uh, the US and France teamed up to fight Britain in the War of Independence. But where does Spain come in? With It, it sounds like Spain's kind of on that side too. Now I know that they had some territory in the Americas also. So were they also fighting the the, the British as well? And then that kind of carried over in Europe. See, I don't really understand. I don't know what was happening in Europe during the uh, the War of Independence over here. Because we, we don't really focus as much on that part of it. Um, but obviously there, were, there was conflict happening over in Europe as well. I just don't know exactly what. Um, so I just know I guess Spain is not on Britain's side here. So... One, Britain hadn't been conquered or crushed and could still fight, meaning Spain couldn't get everything it wanted, and two, it had more important land to regain, notably Florida and also Menorca, both of which it got. When all of that was over in 1780... Okay, so according to this, Britain took over Florida? From I thought that Spain always had control of Florida, I didn't realise the Brits took control of it. Well, I'm learning a lot about my own history that I don't know, apparently in this video. I wasn't expecting that. So... Still fight, meaning Spain couldn't get everything it wanted, and two, it had more important land to regain, notably Florida and also Menorca, both of which it got. When all of that was over in 1783, Spain so never made... was that reacquired through negotiations, then? And also Menorca, both of which it got. When all of that was over in 1783, Spain never made another military attempt to retake the rock. 
So that's it all settled then, right? Well, no. The Spanish government always maintained a claim to Gibraltar, much of which was down to its geographic positioning at the mouth of the Mediterranean, and also because its continued loss was seen as a blight on Spain's national honour. For the next century and a half, though, very little changed with respect to Gibraltar. That was until 1936, when the Spanish Civil War broke out. The border was closed, mostly because of there being too many refugees trying to flee Spain, and Britain further built up Gibraltar's defences. This caused disputes with Spanish leadership, since previously there had been an agreed neutral zone between the two areas. However, Spain wasn't looking, and so Britain quickly built up an airfield there, which became useful when World <laughs> War II broke out. Now, Spain's new leader, Francisco Franco, was clear that he wanted Gibraltar back. However, when he was offered the chance to get it back by joining the Axis in World War II with Germany, he declined. Franco said no because the positives didn't outweigh the negatives and also his he declined. Franco said no because the pros uh, of allying with Hitler, I guess, uh, get Gibraltar back, make new friends along the way. Cons are they, they, they would have to get involved in the war, retaliatory bombings, yeah, that wouldn't be good. Naval blockades. I know Spain uh, was neutral right in World War II. Get it back by joining the Axis in World War II with Germany, he declined. Franco said no because the positives didn't outweigh the negatives and also his country was in ruins. In the post-war world, there was a big drive towards decolonization and Gibraltar was firmly in the crosshairs of this movement. A referendum was held in Gibraltar to determine whether the people wished to be a part of Spain or remain an overseas territory of the United Kingdom. And the results were extremely close, with over 99% of people opting to remain under the control <laughs> of the United Kingdom. Well, I mean, by then, it's been over 200 years, right? So I would imagine it would be weird for the people that live there to go back to Spain. Like, it wouldn't really be... Um, I don't know, like it would feel, it, they're, they're just used to being part of, part of the UK, probably that culture there and all of that, so I can understand why they might opt to um, stay with, with the UK. When Franco caught a mild case of death and his regime came to an end, relations between Britain and Spain improved, and after a series of negotiations, the border reopened. And despite the continuing dispute over the status of... Hang on. Who caught a mild case of death and his regime came to an end, relations between Britain and Spain improved, and after a series of negotiations, the border reopened. And despite the continuing dispute over the status of Gibraltar, there would be no further changes in its status, and to this day, it remains a British overseas territory. Okay, so basically, in summary, the British and the Dutch went down there to take control of Gibraltar for the purpose of, I'm assuming, keeping trade open to the Mediterranean, and maybe also just for their navy, like, as, as a military strategy, so that their navy could still access the Mediterranean should it need to. Spain basically just gave them <laughs> Gibraltar and was like, yeah, okay, you guys can just stay there, right? And then Spain kind of half-heartedly tried to take it back a few times, and then that didn't work, and so it's just kind of always remained part of Britain. And it looks like that the people, they're, you know, basically assimilated into, you know, a British colony, British life, you know, and, and that's the way it's been now for about 300 years, I guess. So it would be, like I said, weird if it went back to, uh, you know, if it got annexed back into Spain. So very interesting. I learned a lot today, actually, and I learned a little bit more about, like, my own American history to an extent. Like, I, still, I don't really know what was going on with Florida down there, whether, um, I guess Britain basically uh, took it over maybe during the War of Independence and then uh, gave it back to Spain after the war in the negotiations peace negotiations. I learned that Gibraltar is actually attached to Spain. For some reason I had it in my head that it was like a more of an island situation. So yeah, good stuff. It was a really quick short video, but packed in a lot of information. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I would certainly appreciate it. And also I have links to my social media my Discord, my Patreon, all of that in the description and the pinned comment. Also in the description is my P.O. Box information if you're looking for that. And also I have a Star Trek podcast. If any of you guys are Trekkies, make sure to check that out. The link is also in the description and pinned comment. So Roger, Scarlet, and I thank you guys for watching. Let's see what Scarlet is up to. I think she's just chilling on the bed, taking a little nap. Anyway, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time.